Hi everybody, thanks for joining me today. As you can see, I'm starting to get dressed up and look all fabulous for our National Simultaneous Storytime, which will be coming tomorrow. We'll be reading this book, Whitney and Brittany Chicken Divas, and aren't they fabulous? And so I'm getting into the spirit with a lovely feather boa bow tie, and I've also got a fantastic pink tulle skirt here. So this will be the story that we're reading tomorrow, and we'll be reading um, and joining in with other libraries um, virtually, schools, long daycare services, and other places all around Australia that will all be reading the same story at the same time. So in celebration and getting ready for this, for this fantastic event, I thought something that we could do today is to make some egg carton chicken masks. So although you may not have some fabulous props like this at home, or you may, who knows what's in your dress up box, here's something that we can make together today that you can join in wear tomorrow for story time. So again, looking for materials that are relatively um, easily accessible. And I thought an egg carton would make a fantastic choice for that. So what we're going to do is we'll need a pair of scissors. And if you've got younger children, mums and dads, you may need to help out. So as you can see from the picture behind, this is where your eyes will be and then your beak. So we just need to do a little bit of cutting out. And in theory, you would think that you would get, if you cut very carefully, up to three masks out of a six egg carton. I'm not sure how realistic that is, but you definitely get two and you get a few out of your 12 packs as well. So if you very easily cut around there, and then as you can see, you've got your eyes and you've got your beak part. So the next part is making holes so that you can actually see this is where you've got to be really, really careful not to poke yourself. So I want nice big eye holes so that we can see through our mask. We'll cut one. I'd recommend a smaller pair of scissors than the ones I've got. They're doing a little bit of a bit of an average job, but that's okay. It's always great getting to use materials they save them ending up in the recycle bin. And you'd be amazed at the things you can do. Again, just jumping on some of the, the common websites that we have can be quite handy. All right, so we've now got our mask. It's got a place for two eyes and our beaky nose. So what we need to do now is decorate it. Now there's lots of things, as you can see in this picture here, they've painted them added feathers. I'm going to paint mine today, but you could easily use textures, pencils, if you've got some stickers. So we might go, let's have, sorry gosh, I'm going to turn around so you can see. We might have a nice purple outline. This would be a great one if the weather's nice. Get outside, put a bit of newspaper down, paint outside, enjoy that autumn breeze before it gets too cold. So we're going to have beautiful purple eyelids like that. Now you could paint all the way in if you want, I suppose. Just depends on what you're looking for. And there's no right or wrong way. Just paint it as you like. So we've got purple. I might have for him, we might add a pink beak for this mask. So National Simultaneous Storytime has been going on for a few years now and is a really exciting way to get everybody exploring the same book and uh, doing a few bits and pieces in relation to that. Give them a bit of paint. Lucinda Gifford is uh, the writer and illustrator for this year's book and it's a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to sharing it with you tomorrow. Okay, so we've got purple eyes, pink beak, also got a little bit of pink glittery glue. So if you've got any glittery glue, you can dab that on, make it as fabulous as you like. Pink glitter. And I do have here as well, a container of feathers, which would have just come from a craft shop or something like that. 
So I will add some feathers to this, but you can absolutely, they're not necessary. As I said, pipe cleaners, buttons, another great use for um, your catalogs, cutting out pictures. You could cut out the colours and add them as well. So we might stick an orange feather and a green feather. This is another one of these ways we were talking about following your child's lead. So if you're working on a mask together, having a chat about the feathers and your paint and using them as opportunities to discuss different colours. All right, so we're going to go with two feathers. It's a fantastic, one of Bernie's fantastic rustic creations as we've all enjoyed over the weeks, and that's okay. And you've sort of got two options with your mask from now. You could either um, get a bit of the string, tie your string around the edge, or alternatively, using one of the a straw, if you've got a straw handy, you can actually tape that to the side there. I'm just looking, I'm not sure if I've got any tape here. Oh, yes, I do. So you could tape a straw to the side, and it's a little bit easier to stick and remove. I'm just going to stick that second feather on. And that might be really handy for some of the younger children that are really keen to dress up but struggle a little bit with actually getting on and off without destroying it. And again, if you didn't have a straw, a stick would be perfect. So we're going to stick that to the side there. Tuck that in. And then we have, as you can see, our fabulous birdie mask. You can hold it on the stick and use it like that. So that is a lot of fun. Nice, um, quick and easy one and would also be really handy for your older children who'd be quite capable of having a go using the scissors, tape, glue to put them all together. So that's a fantastic activity. And as I said, feel free, join in, get one ready, and then you can wear it and read along as we read our story tomorrow. Okay, so just in terms of if you've got your younger children and they may not be into a lot of art and craft or they may just not be quite at that stage yet, Another option is um, I've just thought of a couple of ideas for basic feather play for babies and toddlers. These types of feathers are a little bit fragile. They do have the spine in the feather, as you can see. So if you were going to use these for sensory experiences with babies, um, make sure you do stay close and supervise. And one of the easiest and most simplest ways is just providing them with an opportunity to play with some feathers. There's really nothing else needed putting that down bubs will have a look have a feel probably try and have a taste and that's where i guess we need to be um you know supervising closely there's nothing wrong in terms of baby trying to mouth them but you do need to be mindful that these ones in particular have been artificially dyed making sure that you know bits aren't breaking off and all that, that sort of stuff but um it's a feeling that you know babies and young toddlers wouldn't come into uh, contact with very often a whole heap of feathers so it can be really fun for just exploring as they are if you wanted to extend it a little bit further using some of the items around the home something like a cardboard tube that's from a paper towel obviously your toilet roll ones providing an opportunity where baby can explore and either providing them to the baby to your child younger child and don't get me wrong even your preschools and things love playing with loose parts so it's definitely not just for younger children, but you could pop a whole heap of feathers into the tube and you'll find that children are automatically drawn to pulling them out. Or if they're a little bit older, encouraging them to have a go at popping them in. And as you can see, as it gets fuller, feathers start pushing each other around. So getting them to balance, poke that in, it's really good for the hand-eye coordination, just the sensory aspect again, and problem solving, getting them to solve the problem. Well, what if I keep pushing them in this side and they're coming out that side, what can we do? What could we try? Another alternative or another option, and that was using our egg carton. If you've got another egg carton that's full and hasn't been chopped up for our mask making, it's just making a few simple holes being really careful not to cut yourself, poke yourself. And again, having the children either pull them out from the tube, from the box, or poking them in. 
And this one you'll often find children always, you may have observed as they play, anything where they can stick something in the top of, they quite often consider that a birthday cake. So you may find that you'll end up singing all sorts of songs and talking about all different things. And again, you're following their lead. So if they're singing, start singing, clapping. Who else could we sing the song for? They may just like to look at the colours. They might just like to play with the feathers. Use what your child's interested in to build on further. This one, because it has been cut, is an, actually a really perfect opportunity to have the children poke them in here. So they might find this a little bit fiddly depending on the age and their interests, but they may like to try and fill up the box. Or even if you didn't poke the holes in it, you could again open it up and ask them to fill up the carton. Talking about the colours, all the bits and pieces any boxes if you had any leftover bottles as well children would absolutely got one here you could fill your bottle up with feathers now just keeping in mind that once they're in they probably won't come out and not only have you got an activity where the children are filling the bottle up you then actually end up with another type of sensory bottle that we were looking at yesterday with the label off and a few different colours, that's actually quite beautiful. And if you had a child that was a little bit overwhelmed and wanted to take some time to themselves, you could ask them, have a look. Can you see the orange feather? What about the yellow one? Turn it. There's the yellow one. Purple. So that's actually um, sort of serves two purposes. The children can fill it up and then they can actually sit and have a look. If you held that up to the light or up to the sun, Again, that would be actually quite pretty. So yeah, don't be afraid for your younger children. If arts and crafts or these more structured activities um, aren't quite what they're into, providing them with similar items and just loose that they can explore and build with them as they want is um, just as fine. All right. Okay, and so for our third activity today, which is again coming back to our wonderful Whitney and Brittany story from yesterday. This one is making a Whitney and Brittany chicken diva handprint. So this one, if you would like to be a little bit more structured than just your, your sensory feather play, but they're not quite up to making a mask, this one is a really great fun activity. So essentially you start off with a handprint and this one can be really fun. Some children really love having their hands painted some of them really, really detest it, and some of them sit somewhere in the middle. So pick any colour. Again, I've got purple handy, so we're going to go with purple. This can be a little bit messy, so I always recommend if you've got baby wipes on hand, they'll never go astray. Also a great opportunity, though, if the children are washing their hands, to have a look and show them actually how hard it is to make sure your hands are clean because if there's any paint left on their hands, it shows that that bit hasn't been cleaned up. So there is a, a template here that I've provided a link to. Of course, you can use just a plain bit of paper as well. I'm going to use this one, but whatever's up to you. You could do a whole chicken family if you wanted. If you had lots of children and yourself. Okay, so I've got my hand on there. And we're going to peel him off. Now looking into our picture here, you can see that the thumb becomes the head and then they've got some feathers up the top here. Now they've actually attached a googly eye to the head. Um, so you could attach googly eyes and all those sorts of things. I'm actually just going to use a texture and draw it on. Textures are much more readily available and if you've got little bubbies that like to put things in their mouths, pick them off. Well then a texture is a much safer idea. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a beautiful beak a big beady eye and i'm actually going to add a couple of feet to my chicken so you don't have to follow any particular template just whatever it feels good or whatever your children would like to do is totally fine okay so the next step we might add some feathers onto our fantastic wings here. So bear with me, just add some glue. You can usually find um, the feathers that we're using in places like your Kmart or um, some of your shops, reject shop, Trev's, all those sorts of ones, cheapest chips. 
I'm sure you can find them in other places as well. Anywhere that does craft, I suppose. So I've applied some glue and I am going to do a rainbow chicken. So we've got green. We've got a lovely big young long yellow one. And again, as your children decorate, follow their lead. Um, let them choose the colours of the feathers because it really doesn't matter in the end. They'll all come out looking fabulous and red. I'll stick a red one there. So he's looking pretty, pretty awesome. I might even put some on the body perhaps. So again, it's just all about, um, it's more about the fun, the process, the conversation. It's more about that than anything. Okay, so I'm going to stick one more yellow one on for the body. And then in this example as well, they've also put glitter all over this main part. So you can see that here, that's all glittery. Now, although I'm probably not gonna do that on my fantastic feathery one, I do have some glittery paint left over. So I might just do a bit of a glittery headdress, some glitter on the body. So we all love glitter. But again, if you don't have glittery paint, you could use your glue stick and just put a little bit of loose glitter on. So there's one. That's my fantastic glittery chicken. That's a nice, quick and easy craft idea um, that, yeah, would really work from babies up. Obviously, younger children might need a little bit of assistance, um, but it's always nice to create a bit of art capturing their handprints because, as we know, our children grow far too quickly. And it's always nice to look back on these things. And even if you help apply the handprint, put a bit of glue on, pop some materials out on the tables, and then let the children actually choose what they like to do, what they'd like to put on. You can make one beside them so that although they may end up with the feathers pointing in a different direction or in a way that, you know, may not be overly aesthetically pleasing, you can make one beside them and then both hang them up on the fridge together. But uh, yeah, so there's a few craft activities. As I said, please join me tomorrow. What we're going to do is we will, I will join you live tomorrow so that we can read the story at 11 a.m., which is um, the time that nationally everybody will be reading the story. I look forward to joining you then. We'll have another activity after our read and a couple of songs. But uh, yeah, please feel free to join me and uh, yeah, I'll see you then. Thank you.